So I'm Dennis Matthews. I'm a professor at uh, UC Davis. Um, I direct a Center for Biophotonic Science and Technology there, which is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. I'm also in the Department of Neurological Surgery, and I serve on a bunch of uh, graduate groups that are associated with bioengineering, biophysics, uh, applied sciences, and so forth. I'm also, uh, and have been for many years, um, a member of the staff at Lawrence Livermore National Labs, and there I primarily help them start new uh, initiatives, new kinds of programs, and I've done a lot of commercialization activities with them. Commercializing technologies out of the labs, um, out of the university, uh, both are quite complicated. Uh, typically, as you probably know, one issue is that we work on things that are very, very early stage compared to what investors normally like to, to get involved in. Um, and then also, we have the fairness of opportunity issue that comes up because we're a government-sponsored um, organization, and, and therefore, um, you can't basically give your favorite technology to your brother to go start a company with. So that uh, is a challenge. On the other hand, I think that uh, the National Lab in particular, but uh, universities as well, have a very good reputation with um, entrepreneurs and investors um, all over uh, you know, the United States and probably elsewhere. And so that has helped us, I think, to actually come in with some pretty early stage stuff uh, and be able to convince them to take it to, uh, into a product or, and certainly into a startup, which is, a, uh, in my opinion, a really, really great accomplishment. With the exception of Apple Corporation, uh, not very many of us are able to actually create a market <laughs> uh, because we just don't know enough what the problems are. So I kind of learned early on to listen to those who already know what the problems are, um, in this case, clinicians and various uh, thought leaders in the medical uh, world and then use that information together with what we know how to do as physical scientists and engineers and see if we can come up with a solution. We love to solve problems, but it would be um, probably pretty presumptuous for us to say to think that we could actually figure out what all the problems are because we just don't have enough uh, experience. And I've had the privilege of going to uh, complications workshops. Uh, medical complications workshops with docs and it, it's a privilege because um, you wouldn't be invited to go there if you were involved in uh, litigation in any way. So because they tell you what didn't go well uh, in their procedures and for an engineer that this is you know mecca because all of a sudden you've got all these problems that you can try to solve whereas if you go to your normal um, medical uh, conference, they're going to tell you that 99.5% of all the patients that they worked on you know, had an amazing outcome. But I'm interested in that 0.5% <laughs> and the ones who didn't make it to them, so they don't count in the statistics. So that's, a, that, that's it's very important to listen to them. At the top of the list is raising money, <clears throat> and right underneath that is uh, how long it takes to, to uh, actually you know, get something FDA approved. And the reason it's a big issue, one, it's expensive, of course, but two, it takes time. And that, that's money. And if you have a patent, um, matter of fact, we did some studies on this with some colleagues of ours once. Typically, by the time you get something patented and get around to actually trying to commercialize it, remember, you've only got a 19-year clock running on your patent. You've probably burned up five to seven years of that patent's lifetime. Oops. <laughs> and so then, um, you know, you don't want to have any of these serious delays. And a lot of people, as you know, go offshore to other countries to do some early studies to basically not to get around the FDA, but to get enough compelling evidence that they think they could expedite um, getting things through our, our own regulatory uh, uh, process. Personally, in my experience with, with companies that I've been involved in, uh, that was not, the ones that failed, that's not why they failed. We, we hit a technical hurdle or the investors got spooked and, and ran, you know, that sort of thing. It, the planet is, and the people on it must have 10,000 ideas for patents, some of, most of which have been patented for a non-invasive glucose monitor. Uh, we were fortunate enough to, uh, to be among those that got some stuff patented. We were working with a company um, when we first brought this out, a small company, a small business, um, who got bought out by a big company. 
And when we worked with a small company, everything was going great, uh, this, but the big company paid the small company a lot of money to buy them and said after that, and it took them five years to do this, that they really didn't want to pursue the non-invasive glucose monitor. So eventually they sent us the, the uh, patent back, which is good, and we've had some further discussions with uh, a foundation or two about how to do this. Uh, it still remains one of the holy grails, if you like, of medical diagnostics because it's very, very difficult to measure uh, glucose values non-invasively. And what I fear now from a commercialization standpoint is there are so many patents that in order to actually manufacture one of these things, you would break the bank, so to speak, by having to license all of the necessary patents so that you could practice manufacture. So you're going to have to come up with a really, really clever idea just to, just to navigate the, the, the patent man, minefield out there uh, because the U.S. Patent Office and other countries, no doubt as well, have put out or allowed so many patents to be. Uh, every time I meet with a, a medically oriented or med device oriented venture capitalist, it's at the top of their list because it's such a big market, you know, estimated. 30 billion to 100 billion dollar a year revenues if you had such a device. So uh, yeah, that one's a, that's tough. I still think we could do it if we, uh, if we had a company ready to, ready to go the full way to make it happen.